Now, 2019 was a year many Kenyans would like to forget. Pockets were hit hard by high food prices and fuel prices, with many asking when they would get some reprieve. So why were things so costly last year? Well, it's a problem that started in 2007 when the cost of many staple foods shot up. The factors over the years were adverse weather conditions and climate change, prolonged or recurrent droughts, shifts in local production, disease and consumption shocks, as well as in inflation, just to name a few. Now, in fact, retail prices of food products had gone up by, get this, 83.3% between 2007 and 2017. Now, during that same period, 30% of food commodities have tripled in price. Now, taking all of this into account, how are Kenyans in Nairobi managing the rising cost of living? Well, we sought to find out and bring you the stories of two families living in different parts of the nation's capital. This is our special feature, Surviving the Decade. The cost of living is steadily rising and ordinary Kenyans are feeling the pinch. Mm -hmm. Maize flour prices set to rise higher. In fact, just this week, the governor of central bank said you cannot eat GDP. Keeping in mind the new debt ceiling that has been put in place. But the expectation is that the new year will bring with it economic stability. Just how many of them are coping during this economic situation? The situation is likely to get worse than better. It's not the way most Kenyans expected or wanted to ring in the new year. With a tough 2019 behind them, Kenyans are bracing for yet another tight 12 months ahead. Already Kenyans are living well beyond their means. According to the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics, Kenyans have been spending more than they earn since 2013. Inflation has been on a steady rise since October last year, now sitting at 5.82%. The rise, according to KNBS, is due to hikes in food prices. It's been said, to know what really matters to someone, take a look at where they spend their money. Well, Kenyans spend almost half of their household income on food. Only Nigerians beat us in how much is spent on food globally. So we're here in Madari, one of the larger low-income areas in Nairobi. Now, according to locals, the average household income monthly, 3,000 shillings. Now, remember the statistic that I gave earlier that Kenyans already spend almost half of their income on food. So how are residents actually making it here in a place like Madari? Let's find out. Margaret has called Madare home all her life. She runs a daycare where she charges 30 shillings per child a day. Aside from her rent, transport costs and fees for her children, Margaret is hampered most financially by food. We make our way to the local store to see what a typical day of food shopping is like for Margaret. Mm. 12k. From breakfast to supper. After picking up her essentials such as ugali flour, bread, milk and sugar, Margaret waits to hear the damages. Margaret makes this trip for the same amount of items to feed her family of seven at least three times a week. And when things get tight... Like say, I mean, I should go to copper loans. Is it microfinance? Una copper leo, 
unatafuta unalipa maisha sasa hivi imebaki tu ni kukopesha unakopa tu pesa ndio unakula ukipata kidogo unaenda unalipa tena unakukopesha unakuja tunaishi kwa loans We meet up with centonomy.com CEO Waibaka Gatumia to get his take on what low income earners can do in coping with the cost of living. We were in Madari earlier today and um we were with a woman who said I spend 12,000 a month on food and you know to make up the difference because of course she makes way less. She has to borrow from some mobile facility. How do you advise someone in her position to increase her income? If we're going to sit back and say oh everyone must help us somebody must come and give us some hope in this world then it's not going to happen. What can you sell? Let's try and sell maca or how do we sell briquettes or how do we do this and it may not take a lot of of capital to start such a business or an idea but in in the trying you get better. <laughs> Margaret's story is one that is far too common in countless low-income areas across Nairobi of families who have to borrow to buy food. Well, it's no wonder because Nairobi is ranked the sixth most expensive city in Africa. So, what is it like for a family who has slightly more purchasing power? We're here to find out. We're in Kimadi Estate. We're going to meet Hannah and Jeff to take us through how they're coping with the current cost of living. Hello. Hi. Hi, how are you? How are you? Fine, thank you. Hannah and Jeff, like most middle-class Kenyans, are busy with work, balancing raising three children with responsibilities of paying rent, school fees, and putting food on the table. Thank you so much. She and her husband have jumped on the wholesale shopping bandwagon to save on costs. I have learned the art of going to Marikiti. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's a bit cheaper though the hassle. Of course there's a hassle waking up early. You have to hustle with mama mama bogas as they try to buy. Again also to cut down on the kadogo economy. I no longer do the kadogo economy. And it's 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 crazy. Yeah, it's just crazy. With two of her children in school, Hannah says the new curriculum, though welcomed, has come with some unexpected expenses. My my kids, they are they are they are five and six years old, so they are doing the new CBC curriculum. But what I am not understanding is a small kid having to buy very many books. Some are even unnecessary. So um. I'm 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 looking at it and I'm just wondering is it a way of making more money for the rich again because we've been made to buy books from specific publishers another unexpected expense is what financial gurus have coined the so-called black tax Nowadays emergencies happen you're called to school your kid is sick you're called for a burial your friend is dead you're called for a rasio you just have to be there and especially with these social things nowadays how is it epuka In countries where poverty rates are extremely high this informal system is what saves the day be it in paying for medical bills school fees or supporting aging relatives <laughs> Kenyans being no exception to this unspoken rule feel the burden of the black tax every month. To deal with this Waivaka says the remedy is simple. Budget, budget, budget. Simply write down every cent you spend. It will empower you in that you will first of all recognize how much money passes through your hands. Whichever job you're in, whatever business you're in, there's always potential for growth. And if you can focus on that, I'm telling you 2020 can be better than 2019. Why? Because you'll be increasing your income and then managing your expenses. The gap between your income and expenses grows and that's how wealth is created. This is a gospel Hannah and Jeff live by, forcing them to take a hard look at their spending habits. We actually have a budget book for the family because it used to be chaos. trying to understand you go to work every day you go to hustle every day why is the money so we decided instead of this uh, kelele kelele kilasa let's just get a book whereby we have we write down our income and our expenditures and just see 
where our money is going to. That money was primarily going to food in the Gari household. The rising prices of foodstuffs being the main reason. When comparing prices of key household items from two years ago, most remained relatively the same, with the exception of sugar that decreased and ugali flour that shot up significantly. It is unlikely these prices will ease this year, this confirmed by the Central Bank of Kenya governor in his parting shot for 2019. His words speaking to the resilience that keeps Margaret going and the hope Hannah has for better days ahead. <laughs>